Turner, as V said, and I am more than excited to be with you this afternoon talking about customer care and retention. Now, we've only got about 20 minutes together, which is barely enough time to scratch the surface of one of my favourite topics. But I'm going to do my best, and I'd like to cover three things. I think we've got time for me to introduce you to a technique called the customer life cycle. It's a really simple way of maximising your retail. I'd also like to talk to you about a cultural approach that you can use to build loyalty amongst your regular customers. And then I'd like to show you what can happen when your customers become some of your favourite people. Does that sound OK to you? Well, that's lucky for me then. Brilliant. Right, so let me talk to you a little bit about where my attitude towards customer care and retention comes from. I have been seeking out my happy place in life for a long time. I've been trying to hang out there a long time before I met Gemma Easton and we started Team GB together back two and a half years ago. I no longer work in London, I no longer commute in and out to Victoria or work at John Lewis's head office in employee engagement. I run my business from home part time and I have the honour of sharing the leadership of Team GB with Gemma and Gary and I have to say I've never been happier. For me, happiness is what it's all about. I've been seeking that happy place for a long time, and I've learned that it's been shaped by and inspired by two things, being married to a firefighter and being a mum. Now, people will tell you that there are many, many wonderful benefits about being married to a firefighter, which there are. Thank you. But anybody who is married to a member of an emergency service will also tell you that it teaches you many things along the way. It teaches you that when you are motivated by the sole purpose of helping others and serving others, that you have a real opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. It teaches you that life is fragile and it's precious, and it can, in the blink of an eye, be changed forever. And it also teaches you that you should tell the people that you love that you love them at every opportunity that you get. I learnt that lesson on the 7th of July 2005. My boss at the time got his leadership team together in a meeting room and told us that bombs had exploded in London. From the location of those bombs, I knew that my husband was going to be in the first crew to attend the tube station bombing. And for that day, I couldn't get hold of him on the phone. And even if I could, had the phone lines not be down, he wouldn't have answered that phone. He was out there doing his thing, making his difference. At the time, I was seven months pregnant with our first child, and for six very long hours that day, I didn't know if he was going to come home. I didn't know whether I'd get the chance to tell him I loved him one more time, or whether he would ever get the chance to meet our son. A lot went through my head that day. It wasn't about the material things in life, and it wasn't about the money. What went through my head was the memories that we'd made in all the years we'd been together. It was about the things we'd laughed about, the places we'd seen, the morals and the values that he had, and the amazing father that I knew he would become. And at precisely 3.07 that day, when I got a text through that simply said, I'm OK, I love you, my world changed just a little bit. Because it was in that moment that I made a deal with myself, that that was it. From here on in, I was going to do everything I could in the pursuit of happiness for our family. It became my sole purpose to jam as much fun and enjoyment into every day as I possibly could. It became my job to make sure that I was present in the moment and I did not miss a thing. And therefore I agreed with myself to whatever I did in the future, I would give it my all so that when we were old and grey looking back on our life together, there would be no should have, would have or could have associated with the things that we would have done had we been just a little bit braver. And I tell you that story because for me, I think in life, just as in forever, your success is determined by your attitude towards it. And when I think of forever, I think that your attitude towards your customers will dictate your retailing success. In Team GB, from day one, Gemma and I have coached people and encouraged them to build businesses with very solid retail foundations. Those foundations need to be built on great customer care. Because the people that we work with in our team, they deserve to have stable, successful, enjoyable businesses. 
We know that that type of business comes from having solid retail foundations. Those foundations come from great having loyal customer in your team and in your business, and that requires you to deliver first-class customer care. Let me show you my retailing strategy. This is it. What I want to have in my business is four case credits of regular customer retailing. I want to have it from as, many, um, as few people as possible. I want them to buy as many products as they possibly can from me, and I want to look after them in the least amount of time possible. Why? Because there's more to life. Now, I don't want to break any hearts here, but I did not join Forever Living to sell aloe vera. Mind you, I didn't join Forever Living because there were a variety of brightly colored sashes, but in my journey, I've become a bit partial to a sash. Who'd have thought it? But selling aloe vera was not the life plan. But what I realized was for me to be able to enjoy coaching people to build businesses that took them towards living in their happy place, that I had to accept I needed to be good at retailing our products. So I did. And I've done that wholeheartedly with a good level of product knowledge, integrity, and passion. So how's that working out for me? Well, every month I retail six to eight case credits from regular customers. There's 13 of them. And I look after them in just a few hours a week. And with a 48% profit margin on those products, that's a nice amount of money coming into the, ha the family household every month. And I'll show you the difference that means, ma makes to us in a moment. So what's the secret to getting regular customers? I believe it's in the relationship. If you chase the relationship, the sale will come. Your relationship with your customers is the one thing that nobody else can copy, recreate, or rival. It's the only thing that you've got that will separate you from every other forever living business owner out there. And when you do pay attention and place importance on that relationship, the sales truly will come. Let me show you what I mean. Now, for those of you who know me and have had any training from me, you know I don't like to be too far away from a flip chart. It makes me very nervous. But what I'd like to do is I would like to talk you through the customer life cycle. Everything that I do in life, actually, is simple. I'm not very good with complex things. And this is the customer life cycle. It's a really simple way of doing two things. It reminds you that there are seven opportunities from every customer that joins your business. And it encourages you to put the person and not the product at the heart of your business. Let me show you what I mean. Let me talk to you about a customer of mine, Tracy. Tracy's a school mum. I've known Tracy, our children have been to school together for the best part of, of two years. And we didn't know each other very well. I was on the commute, so I had precisely six and a half minutes to drop off and get back to the car to catch the train. But in one morning, I used my favorite retailing question on Tracy, which might surprise you because it's simply, hi, how are you? That question in itself is the gift that keeps on giving because people will tell you so much about what is going on for them. As of yet, I've never met anybody who when I said, hi, how are you? They've never once replied, do you know what? I'm happy, my immune system is strong, and my energy levels are high. <laughs> Instead, they will tell me, I'm a bit tired, I'm a bit run down, I've got a cold coming, or I hate my job. And that gives me an opening to introduce either our products or our business to those people. So one day, I said to Tracy, hi, how are you? And she said, oh, I'm all right, I'm just a bit tired. So I said to her, oh, I know exactly how that used to feel. And I introduced her to the product that she told me she needed in her life. And she said, where'd you get it? Holland and Barrett. I said, no, you get it from me. It's part of my business. She said, really? I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring some to you this afternoon and you can try it. Oh, no, I don't want to put you out. Not put me out. Let me help you with that. I will have it here, 10 past three. A few hours later, we're back on the school run. Tracy thinks I'm being kind. As far as my business head is concerned, what have I just done? Just lent Tracy a pup. In my world, a pup is simply introducing somebody to a product that they have not bought from me before. I am not paralyzed by the lack of a wicker basket. A pup is just a product <laughs> exchanging hands. So, Tracy takes the bee pollen home. I look after her for the best part of a couple of days, make sure she knows how to use it, make sure she's enjoying it. 
What happens then? Trace said to me, do you know what? That is wicked. Can I have some? Of course you can. What's just happened? Tracy's made her first purchase. I will be retailing from Tracy for the rest of her adult life. She just doesn't realise it yet. <laughs> so what happens is, now, I'm really fond of Tracy. She's benefiting me no end, so I take very good care of her. And one day, about a week later, she said to me, oh, can my sister have some bee pollen? I said, oh, well, she could, Tracy, but I'd really like to meet her because I need to make sure that that's the right product for her. And she said, right, OK. I said, I tell you what, I'll bring the bee pollen around, a few other bits and bobs, after a school run one morning, invite your sister to your house, a couple of other friends, and I'll happily chat to her about it. Would you mind? No, Tracy. This is like some weird role play. Um, <laughs> so what, what happened was I popped round to Tracy's after school. Um, after we'd done the drop off, her sister, her mum and her friend were there. They think we're having a cup of coffee. I'm product launching. Because essentially, in my world, a product launch is just people and product in the same place. I don't have to wait till there's eight of them on a sofa of an evening with posh invites. Anywhere that I can get my NDP box out, we're launching. What happens? I don't know Tracy's sister, I don't know her mum, and I don't know her friend. Boom, who do you know list? They're straight on there. And because we're product launching, what happens next? They make a purchase. Not in my world, they're gonna be regular customers. And so, I write down everything that I know about my customers. It's really important to remember the detail. And then what happens is, when Tracy's sister's product comes in, I drop it round to her, and I also drop round a pup. So she didn't ask one, I didn't offer her one. I took it to her door and I said, oh, you know when we were having that coffee at Tracy's, you were looking at the Sonia skincare set. Here it is, try it for a few days. I'd love to know your opinion. What happens is, she buys something. That goes on to the information that I know about her. And we keep playing this game every month. Every time I drop something off, I will I take round something that I know that she'll like, but she doesn't buy from me yet. And at some point, we will talk about a clean nine. Because every month, I'm building up a relationship with Tracy, and every month I see her, I'm going to know when it's Christmas. I'm going to know when it's her holiday. I'm going to know when she's overindulged. I'm going to know when she's a bit sluggish. And that's when, as a friend, I'm going to recommend she considers doing a clean nine. By this time, Tracy will trust me, and she'll probably buy that clean nine from me. And I'll say to her, you know, it's always good to do this with someone else. Have you got anyone else that you know that might be interested in doing a cleanse? She says, well, actually, yeah, I've got a friend called Angela. Brilliant. Boom, Angela's on me. Who do you know list? So I have a chat with Angela about the clean nine. She says to me, do you know what? It sounds great, but it's a bit expensive. 108 pounds. I said, come on, Angela, it's 12 pound a day. Is that, are you not worth an investment of 12 pound a day? <laughs> Angela says, well, times are a bit tough at the moment. I said, well, I tell you what, why don't you get a few friends around yours one evening, I'll bring Prosecco, I'll bring a clean eye and chat to you about it. Oh, would you mind? Not at all. And <laughs> as a way of thanking her for having the product launch that she didn't ask for, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer her a discounted clean nine. She's going to bring people that I don't know. They're going to go on my who do you know list. They're going to make a first purchase. I'm going to treat them like a regular customer. When I drop off their products, I'm going to take something that they saw at the launch but they didn't buy yet. They're going to like it, they're going to buy it, and we carry on. And at some point or another, we will end up here. Tracy will say to me, right, talk to me about what it is you do and how you do it. Because a few things will be evident to Tracy by then. She'll know that I'm making money from her. She'll know that I'm selling products to all her friends. And she'll know that I'm shiny and happy. And that is often enough for people to want to know more. <laughs> so, if the customer life cycle is what I do to build regular customers in my business, let me talk to you about an approach that I use which helps me understand how I should behave towards those customers to build loyalty. We use and coach an approach called love. What I learned a long time ago was that people rarely remember what you say, but they always remember how you made them feel. And that's critically important when you want to build loyal, regular customers. So in Team GB, what we coach is to love your customers. Listen and then act on what you hear. Organize yourself, your communication, and your business. Value them and show them that you value them and treat them all equally. Let me show you what I mean. 
Listening to your customers, learn the art of conversation. Learn how to explain what you do, which shouldn't contain the words, I just sell a bit of aloe. Learn how to explain the business that you do, explain how you got involved, and explain why you do it. If you listen out for a need, people will tell you exactly what products and why they need to be introduced to your business. And treat your regular customers like prospects. Now here is the thing with this. From my experience, what I see is a weird thing happens. When we've got a prospect in our business, we behave like we're dating them. And what happens is we are really careful to make sure we always display the best version of ourselves. We take great care in building the relationship with them. We respect their need for time when they're working out what it is that we can offer them. And we romance them around that business building cycle until they have got enough information to decide whether they want to join our team or not. However, quite often, when we've got a customer in our business, we treat them more like a one-night stand. We're in there, we've sold something, and we are off. There's no phone call the next day to see how it was for them. And a few weeks later, we can barely remember their name. And if you're laughing because you know when it comes to treating your customers, you're a little bit of an aloe floozy, then let me suggest that this business would be so much more enjoyable and lucrative if you were to treat your customers and your prospects with an equal amount of importance and respect. Organize your business. This is the really simple stuff. Streamline your range. My, my uh, business is based on 10 products. I don't have enough time to learn 250 products. I wish I did, but I don't. So I've picked 10 and I've committed to become an expert of those 10 products. Seven of them run out monthly. Absolutely essential if I'm going to use the customer life cycle to expand their range. Track your customers and their sales. An old boss of mine used to say, if you don't measure it, it won't move. I hate to admit it, she was right. There's two things that I track about my customers, my relationship with them and the sales. And I'll show you why in a moment. And professionalize how you do business. Be confident enough to talk to your customers about how you're going to interact with them, when you're going to interact with them, and then see that through and be good to your word. This is my favorite part of customer care and retention, valuing customers. There is anybody in the world can sell your customer an aloe vera based product. You are the only one that can make them feel valued. We coach an approach called TNTs, tiny noticeable things. If it's important to one of my customers, it's incredibly important to me. Tiny noticeable things could be something like a birthday card, it could be um, a gift of an aloe lips before their holiday abroad. It could be the personal details that you put in um, a text message. The name of their husband or their pets is often a winner. It could be the floral note paper that one of my customers, Delia and I, we exchange with every order. She loves a bit of a hyacinth. I've come to know that. It's important to me. Treating your customers equally. The biggest thing you could do to help your retailing business is to retail at full price. If you want a customer to believe that a product is good value for money, they need to see that you believe it is worth the full retail price. And as we build teams, often our networks overlap. And in that respect, unless you are retailing at full price, there will become a moment where you will undercut a member of your own team. And let me tell you, that is hashtag awkward when that comes out. And it also, it stops you from building this pipeline. 87% of my team were introduced to a product first. If I discounted the products then, then I wouldn't be doing them any favors. So if that's what I do, and love is how I do it, let me explain to you why as I close this afternoon. This is my dream board from 2015. This is what my children drew me to show me how they'd like us to spend our time throughout the year. And that's what kept me focused and showed me what I was prepared to work for. I spent 12 months working through that little list of uh, crab fishing, steam train rides, uh, zookeeper days, going to Disneyland Paris. But the lovely thing is my husband and I never put a hand in our pocket to pay for one of those experiences. They were all paid for by my customers. Jill, she bought a clean nine from me and treated us to an afternoon of crab fishing. After two months of being my customer, Joanne treated the kids to a morning of go-karting. Our trip to uh, Port Lim to be a zookeeper was played, paid, for my, by my, paid for by my friend Emma in six manageable monthly instalments. 
And her custom and all that floral note paper meant that after 18 months of meeting Delia, my customer retailing to her took us to Disneyland Paris. My business is all about making memories and my customers pay for those memories for my children. My team leading bonus is the thing that pays for the roof over our head and the pension pot in the future. It's my retailing business that creates the opportunities that makes memories in our house. That's why those 13 people are incredibly important to me and that's why I will continue to love them to bits. So as I end this afternoon, I offer you these three top tips for your retailing customer care and retention. Tip number one, decide what you stand for. Decide what your retailing business is gonna be, but whatever it is, it will be the thing that sets you apart. Whatever it is, keep it simple, keep it honest, and keep it you. Secondly, accept that achieving any goal takes time. It takes patience and time to take hundreds of baby steps towards your goal. Retailing is no different. And the last top tip is simply there. When you know where you're going and you've got resilience and patience to work towards it, never stop until you are proud of what you've created. You won't regret it. So this afternoon, thank you from me and on behalf of Team GB for letting me have a reason to come and bring the best of myself this afternoon. And happy retailing to you all. Thank you.